kids. I know you all were excited after uh, the Family Focus Sunday, uh, the one that we had previously. And uh, what did you all see during that Family Focus Sunday the last time? Who was there? Who came in and made a special appearance? Batman, Batman yes. Unfortunately, Batman died yesterday. <laughs> so what can we do? Adam West, he's gone. He was a TV Batman. Probably you all didn't see him, but uh, all the older folks, they know him. But he's gone, and uh, hopefully if we make it on the other side, we may see him, we may not see him. But that's all right. So I hope to have your attention as I speak to the entire uh, congregation this afternoon. We're going to be learning from a very, very familiar story. Stories are the ways in which our lives are built. And God speaks through different stories. And we've got so many stories in the Bible. And I've chosen a very familiar story from which we can unearth a treasure, a very major principle in our life. Okay, how many of us here, if I'm going to ask you a question, want to say yes to God, to whatever he asks you to do? Yes to God. We all want to say yes to God, right? But the thing is, I'm going to tell you that truly you're not saying yes to God. You know what kind of people we are? We are always, when you go and ask somebody a question, would you say yes? I'm going to ask them a particular question. What would they say? The answer sometimes. They would not say yes or they would not say no. They would say yes and no. The answer to this question is yes and no. So we are that kind of people, even with God. We say yes to God, and sometimes we say no to God. And even to other people. We are the yes and no people. But there is this young man in the Bible who said, when he said yes to God, he said no to many other things. So whenever you say yes to God, it means it's implicit that you are required to say no to many things. There is no yes and no to God. When you say yes to God, you are implicitly telling him, God, I'm going to say no to many things. That is how it works. And this man's name is Daniel. You all know the story of Daniel, a very familiar story, kids. What's the first thing that comes to your mind about Daniel? Joel. He prays three times a day. Wow. That's a wonderful observation. Anybody else? What the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Daniel? Lion's Den. Look at that. Lion's Den. Now you got the message. He already said my message now. So, Daniel, like how we see in the lives of our children, God works in young people as well as in old people. He works everyone in between as well. So that is why we in our church, we give importance, significance to young children. And we took so much of time because God, I believe he has used some of these kids to minister to you today. And we wanted to show you what the other people were doing in order to disciple them and bring them up in the training and knowledge of the Lord. So Daniel was one such person who was uh, the brightest talent. If you want to pick somebody from Harvard, like the brightest talent, he was kind of the Harvard guy there, the Ivy League, Ivy League student there. They wanted the brightest and the best. And he came into captivity into Babylon from Jerusalem. He was a Hebrew guy. So the first thing that you want to know about Daniel, how he said yes to God, and when he said no, is he gets into the king's palace, and he, along with all the other young people, are given food. How many of us like food, right? Given royal food. Very special food. And then they come to him and they say, you want to have this food. It's the best. It's like from McDonald's, right? Or the, uh, all the things that you guys like. It's royal. It's meat. Wine and all that. And you know what Daniel says? No, I want to eat vegetables just like you kids. Right? You're going to say no to McDonald's and say, I'm going to eat vegetables. I want salad. 
You guys do that? Yeah. Maybe the older people do that, not you. Right? When they're young, they eat all the burgers. Now they go for salad in order to maintain themselves. So, but Daniel, he said no. You know why he said no? Because he had said yes to God. He said yes to God. He, he knew who Yahweh was. So when the time came, he said no. And he said, I will eat vegetables. Test me with all the other people and see. And he won the test along with the, uh, along with the other friends of his. He won the test. Now, the second time, we'll see how he says no. Because he said yes to God. So right after this incident, what happens is, he and his friends are all there. They are promoted. They are doing well. And then the king, uh, the people there become jealous of him. Jealous of him and his friends. So what he does is, uh, they want to do something. But the king, he had a dream. And he wanted some of the magicians and the astrologers to come and interpret the dream. So the king sends out lots of people out there. He said, bring all the wise people to come and interpret the dream. But the thing is, he puts a condition, and the condition is that, when you come and ask me, when, when, when you come to me, you got to tell me the dream I had as well as the interpretation. I'm not going to tell you the dream. You got to tell me my dream and also the interpretation. So none of the people there could do it, and so the king said, chop off everybody's head. This news came to Daniel and his friends. And look at what Daniel did. He said, give us a chance. King, I'm going to take this as a challenge. I'm going to do something. I'll try and do this, well, whatever you're asking me, but give me some time. And in that time, you know what he did? He went to his friends, three people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he said, guys, come. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. This revealer of mysteries, God, he is going to reveal things to us so that I can go and save our lives. Prayer saves lives. Prayer does the supernatural. So they pray together. God revealed the mystery. And Daniel goes to the king and he saves the lives of all the people out there. Because he said yes to God and no to some of the other things. Here you can see that God is revealing mysteries. And then comes another situation. Now the situation that we spoke about. The one that he's famous for. And as this little kid said, Daniel had a disciplined, disciplined life of prayer. Three times a day he used to pray. And so, the jealous people around him, this time what they said, we're going to get this guy, we want to get Daniel, somehow we want to do some harm to him, because he seems to be too good. Like how people, when we are favored highly by God, there will be people who are jealous about us. But God's protection and favor is on Daniel, but still they want to do something. But you, the most important thing is, they could not find any flaw in Daniel. And they said, the only place where we can find a flaw in him will be with regard to the law of God. It's only with regard to his relationship with God that he's doing something. That's where we can find some fault with him. You know, that is the exact situation we are living here in America. And also in most of the world now. Are we going to be like Daniel? Are we like Daniel that... The people around us will not find any flaw inside of us except the fact that you and I are living by the word of God. And they become intolerant of us. Would you be able to be, say, would you be able to say that you are that kind of a Christian following Christ that the only flaw that they find in you is because you are following God's law. And they cannot stand it. And so they have to imprison you. They have to take you away. Or are you compromising your life and living like those people? So they say, he's also like one of us. So there's no problem with us. There's no problem with him. Daniel lived an uncompromising life. So what happens here? Here they say, the only way that we can do it is, we have to say for the next 30 days, nobody in this kingdom can pray 
to anyone except the king. Nobody can pray to anybody except the king. And you know what Daniel said? No. He said no. Why? Because he had said yes to God. He said yes to God, so he said no. Though you can tell me that I have to do this, I will not do it. And the thing is, just like he had done before, he went, he opened up the windows, and he continued to pray. And they took him from there. They found fault with him and said, you have broken the law that the king has imposed, so now we are going to put you into the den of lions. And many of us think that Daniel, they're the young, brightest mind that you ever had, He was 15 years old when he first came on the scene, 17 years when he interpreted the first dream, and when he went into the den of lions, he was 81 to 83 years old. He was not a young man. 81 to 83 years old. And you know what? I think the reason why he could do this is because he has built a lifetime, a lifestyle of prayer that gave him the confidence that he can even lay his life down on that one thing that God, the one God that he believed in, the revealer of mysteries, he is a real God. And he will do what he says. Saying yes to God involves saying no to many things. You can never say yes and no to God. Kids, I want you to listen up. If you are going to say yes to God, when you're starting your life here in the church, which is a privilege that many of the other people do not have, your parents are here, they are bringing you here, they are involving you in several ministries, learn from your teachers. Learn from the people who are coaching you and be like Daniel. Build a lifetime of prayer and say yes to God so that when the time comes, you will say no to all the other things that are not in line with God's will. So with that, how many of us are willing to say yes today to God? It's going to say no to many things. I think there are some things in the lives of young people when you are living in this culture, many things draw you and you are not able to say no to that because you want to be one among those people. But Daniel stood out from the crowd. Daniel was not one among the crowd. He stood out from the crowd because he believed in Yahweh. And the only fault that they could find in him is because he lived again. He lived according to the principles of God's word, the God that he knew. Would we be found guilty of living according to the principles of God's word? That is our challenge today. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, We thank you for being with us and speaking to us even through Daniel's life. Saying yes to you involves saying no to many things that pulls us and attracts us to be like the world. Would you speak to those areas in the lives that your people will have to say no? Would you please help each and every one of us here and give us the courage and the boldness to say no to the things of the world and the things that are not pleasing in your eyes and we can completely and totally say yes to you and you alone, Lord. Let there be many Daniels built up here 
many, many Daniels from this young generation. We thank you and we praise you for this example that you have given us. Help each and every one of us to build a lifestyle of prayer that we will have the confidence that Daniel had when even, even when he was 80 plus years old to go into the den of lions and know that you are with him. That you will never leave him nor forsake him. I pray for the people here who are in a similar situation. Scary situation. Lord, I pray the God who shut the mouth of lions would come through for them. Would you shut every negative thing that is coming against them? And would you deliver your people, Lord? Like how you delivered Daniel. Help us, Lord, to wholeheartedly say yes to you and no to all the other things that are against your will. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.